Alright, uh, whatever I'm going to share with you today, I've, you know, the examples, I've already taken permission from the parties involved. And uh, in some cases where they have not been comfortable, I've changed a few details. But these are all real incidents, okay, real incidents. And uh, I've written down my points so that I'm careful about what I say. Okay. Now, uh, yesterday uh, night, yesterday in the night, you know, I was just retiring for the day, and I happened to get this uh, person who asked me, "Lawyer, I'd like to book your session." So I was actually sleepy, and I, I told the person, uh, "You know, we can do it tomorrow because I was going to retire for the day." He said, "No, lawyer, I." I need, it's urgent, I need to talk to you. Tell me what is the price, I'll pay. So, you know, I, and I'm a businessman. So if you want super urgently when, you know, at, you know, your convenience, obviously you have to pay a premium. So I charged him much more and I told him, I'll be charging much more. He said, that's okay. What is your charge? I told him the charge and to my shock and surprise, he just wired the money immediately. I was like, okay, so I guess this guy is serious and, you know, my sleep just went away because I realized he's a very serious customer, he's not, you know, bargaining. So, okay, we started to speak uh, and uh, he came on video and basic, the, the nutshell of the whole problem was his son, uh, his son uh, the guy's rich, successful, whatever. I can't give you specifics here. But his son tried to stab him, stab him with a knife. And I was like, why would your son stab you with a knife? Now the guy has a successful career, everything is good. He is an amazing guy, showed me a couple of photographs, this and that. Now his son decided to stab him because he wouldn't let him uh, uh, go out with his friends. They had a social media, this thing, and they're planning some uh, some activity related to social media. And obviously, because of the COVID protocols and all that, uh, you can't do it. But they and he and his gang of friends have decided to do something secretive. So his father didn't let him go. And uh, young boy, huh? not old. And because of this, the son got so angry, he took a knife to stab him. You know, the father was really, really disturbed. And uh, then obviously I could make out the mother was sitting next and uh, uh, I'll not give you details as to what happened, uh, the thing, but, and after speaking to him for literally, uh, spoke to him for almost two and a half hours, I kind of like, not only understood what was the reason this was happening, but uh, I gave him a couple of solutions and strategies okay now let me tell you this is not a remote incident this has become a very common feature where today's generation youngsters they are doing things which are no longer normal they are doing uh, and they are pushed to act and behave in a certain way this was one example let me give you another one uh, this happened a few months ago the once again a parent uh, called me up successful rich well to do now what is the problem here their daughter whom they had planned to imagine great career great everything and planned to put the daughter for an ivy league college that is like you know princeton or yale or harvard that kind of university and uh, to the shock and surprise of the parent, the girl decided, no, I don't want to do that. And why you may ask? Because she decided that she wanted to be a famous singer, a famous singer, a famous uh, artist, a YouTuber, influencer, you know, all that mix. And the father and mother both are very well educated, both have their PhDs and all that. And they wanted the daughter to go in the same. And the problem is not only they have their daughter, the younger one also, 
wanted to pursue that and uh, i remember one last example which i had i'm giving you just the extreme cases this father had purchased uh, his son a uh, land cruiser for his birthday land cruiser you know four wheel and uh, next day when i had gone into the building i had walked i saw this land cruiser smashed the windows were smashed the bonnet was full of bumps uh, there was a steel rod through the the thing and the tires had been slashed and so i was like what the fuck just happened here so i asked the building watchman the building watchman told me that the son the son himself destroyed all this so i was like why the fuck did the son do that this uh, he, isn't this supposed to be his birthday gift just the next day why would he destroy it it seems the son didn't want a pajero a son wanted the hammer and uh, his friends were making fun of him online and some were saying hey, if your father really loved me and all that bullshit now i have given you three examples of real life incidents okay real life these are not fabricated now why is this happening in fact check today's youngsters you'll see so many of them doing things which are shocking like spielberg's daughter steven spielberg his daughter has got into the porno industry she is a porn artist she likes to show herself naked and have sex with random men even though she could have done anything you have uh, like i think magic johnson magic johnson's son who wants to be a son wants to be a girl dresses up like a girl flaunts himself he looks so hideous but he is banking on his father's success and trying to be famous just have a look at it in fact uh, you have now nowadays celebrity stars who say my child is not a male my child is not a female it's a my child will choose her gender or his gender now what is happening actually what is happening there is a massive problem that today's generation is facing and it's a very serious one huh? it's not a joke it's not uh, to be taken lightly in fact okay i've given you extreme cases but i can assure you this much this is more common than you think in fact the number of youngsters who interact with me who send me messages who chat with me who i mean it makes me realize that we are living in very dangerous times now i'm not trying to give you gloom and doom i'll give you actual examples as to why today's generation is lost and why these incidents are actually happening i've written down 30 points i know that's quite a lot but i decided in this one video i would give you everything i'll put the time stamps down below and i request you i i genuinely from my heart i request you don't watch this video at one sitting watch it bits and pieces put it as save later and watch it again you know little by little by little because through this video i not only want you to guide other people by yourself if you don't want to share my video that's fine you guide other people or if you're a youngster please pay attention to these points because it is um, you feel horrible when you come to know that today's youngsters young boys and girls are actually going to ruin their lives i mean just a few days ago i got this young girl who called me and uh, i mean uh, sh- would you believe a 20 year old girl got in touch with me i was just retiring for the day she is actually advising me 20 year old girl is advising me on uh you know advice and tips to my wife and uh, you know i asked her how old are you know she said age is just a number no how old are you she said i'm 20 20ish and she is giving me advice to give my wife asked her, are you married no you have a child no then what kind of advice i gave she said because uh, you don't have to go through it to give advice and this is the kind of generation that we are facing today in fact i even get girls who tell me you know like the ones you must have known my boyfriend told me if i love him i should have sex with him otherwise i don't love him it's it's 
before it was peer pressure today it's self made pressure so here are the points i'll read them out one by one and you tell me do you agree not agree okay the time stamps are down below point number 1 the first one is failed parenting i can tell you without a doubt the number one reason why today's generation has failed uh, as is lost or whatever is because of failed parenting see parenting is not just giving birth parenting is not just sending to the school parenting is not just checking the homework and disciplining that you can do it by sending to a bloody nursery or having a housemaid you know in fact a housemaid sometimes does a better job than parents parenting is actually spending time with the child being with the child supervising it's a thankless fucking job it's crazy man it drives you up the wall why do you think i purposely asked my wife never to work in fact anyway she doesn't need to work because it would be useless she earns peanuts that's why when i chose a life partner i chose someone who prefers to be a housewife who prefers to stay at home who you know like i told you low maintenance the reason being is i wanted someone to be at home and be with the child and the best example is me see look at the tattoos on my face look at the tattoos on my body look at my career path if you check all the mistakes that i made how did this happen this happened because i didn't have parents even though they were there my stepfather my stepfather's role was only to abuse me my stepmother's role was only to pay my bills and whatever i was all alone and those days i didn't have the internet the only thing i had was friends and a little bit of tv and comic books and all that and i formed my opinion of the world through that today you have the same problem happening but even worse you have the mother working the father working both are busy both come home late both go work early the child is left 24/7 almost in their own world of discovery and given the fact now today you have social media you have a smartphone that opens up the doors the flood gates of whatever you search what do you think they are going to watch what do you think they are going to learn it's a gamble and 99% it's always garbage that they will search for tiktok and all that rubbish so the first one the first most important point is failed parenting which is why today's generation is lost you cannot have parents both the parents work one has to be at home has to others you cannot it's impossible to have a proper child because then uh, you're leaving it to luck you know the second point is this is also a major issue man the parents believe by giving sweet sounding words by inflating their ego by giving them confidence they are actually doing the child a favor no you're doing a big big bloody fucked up mistake like for example the biggest one is telling the child you're special you know the number of parents who have spoken to me always they will say this law you have no idea how special my child is oh law you have no idea how smart my child is oh law if you talk to my son or daughter oh law your mind will just explode you will be shocked you will be amazed i mean the parent the way they are introducing their child is as if uh, this is elon musk uh, bill gates uh, mark zuckerberg uh, uh, steve jobs all mixed into one and then you know they bring the child in front of the camera and i'm you know sitting there looking at the child and uh, he's like the child is just like a small little baby and he's like hello uncle hello uncle loy uh, uh, hello mr loy you can make out the child's a fucking kid man what special what you can memorize you can play the rubik's cube you can do some painting is that special what the fuck is that i mean in today's world we are talking of money we are talking of uh, you know having a career having a job having being able to sustain and survive by yourself you can't do all that and you are talking about oh i can sing i can dance i can paint what the fuck is that and the most miserable one is Loy, she, she will give you advice. Loy, she will give you advice. What the, f you know? Before I used to be very polite. Now, when a parent tells me a child is special, I said, "Do you want me to give an acid test to prove if your child is special or not?" The mistake the parent can do is say yes. In seconds, I puncture the child. Literally, they end up in tears. And I tell the parent, "See, 
this is for you to blame don't give a child a false sense of you know security and false uh, praise in the real world you might think a child is special real world nobody gives a fuck man then the next point uh, this one is uh, it's necessary but then again you don't know how they play with it encouragement see it's good to encourage a child oh come on you can do it and all but then when you encourage too much in the form of support you spoil the child i'll give you an example here you know normally you see a father when he's with his daughter if the daughter falls he'll say oh my poor baby and he'll run and catch her and oh you got boo boo and the child will cry and if it's a boy normally you'd say oh, come on get up get up come on you're strong you're a man what is the unconscious message you're giving for a boy you're telling you're a man you can take pain for a girl when i fall down oh poor thing poor thing so what does a girl feel if i get hurt if i'm vulnerable and i'm weak i'll have a knight in the shiny armor come to me i'll have attention given to me i'll have uh, importance given so good i will keep crying i'll keep falling down i'll play the victim card and with a boy what are you doing oh you got pain very good you're a man you're macho come on go get some pain go get a see there's no right and wrong okay there's no right and wrong that is universally but you need to communicate with the child so for example when my daughter falls down i tell the daughter get up you know she's not serious she just fell down she got her little hurt till i get up and then what happened i i communicate with my daughter and then wipe okay next time don't do it because obviously she did mischief like that day when we went to the honda showroom you know there are these chairs which are kept in front of the counter normally in our house when we sit on a chair she jumps at the back and tries to hang on it what she did is there was nobody sitting on the chair she just grabbed on it tried to hang the whole chair and her fell down when it fell down the chair fell on top of it, it was not a heavy chair my wife rushed to help i said no wait i was standing there the chair was on top of the baby i said get up come on get up the baby kept crying and all that i said no get up the people were watching i said get up you're okay fine i just showed and she realized that okay nothing she wasn't serious so she moved the chair out i helped her with the chair up and she stood she went to her mama because obviously it was paining a little bit she was fine and then she decided no more pulling the chairs and she has never done it since see it's it's how you communicate to the child no not just encouragement not just bravado no the communication that is important to know okay when you have to communicate positive and when you have to communicate negative you can't have a oh come on uh, you know my baby is this and that encourage and kiss and point number 4 i i strongly feel that the generation that we have today is searching for an identity okay and given that they are just surrounded by all these personalities like they see the rock they see kim kardashian they see uh, superman they see superheroes they see uh, celebrity stars so what happens is searching for their identity okay who am i and then they see their friends and they have amazing facebook pages and instagram personal in fact i i find it very disturbing when i see online i just found out huh there are these uh, youtube channels where they have these young girls young girls and young boys put makeup okay or uh, it's a production value and they are presenting them to have a i don't know podcast or whatever to talk young children Oh my god he's so cute oh oh i don't know what is i would have teached him ha 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 and they all talk you know you're talking a small ch- and they have so many views and followers and follow me on my twitter handle and this and that now just imagine a a child looking at this you know how how horrible the child would feel oh shish they are successful i am not they have so many followers i i don't have you know the it impacts their self esteem and this really causes problem because now they are they are they are searching for their identity they are searching okay how can i be special how can i get followers how can i get fans how can i get attention 
and when you are in a society that judges you based on all these factors from likes followers and fame and all that it is really bad yeah it's uh, oh once upon a time you know there was none of this today every child is exposed to the social media it's causing a massive uh, i don't know it's like a time bomb man so many children are going through shit because of this point number 5 oh this one is uh, one of the worst advice parents can give and the worst advice is you can be anything you want to be you must have seen this motivational videos or this inspirational speeches that people give after getting an oscar or an award what do they say you can dare to dream achieve the impossible do whatever uh, you set your heart or never give up you must have uh, heard all these uh, you know famous sayings right now the problem what happens here is when you have uh, the parent giving an advice that uh, you can do anything you want you can be whatever you want to be you are pumping in a kind of uh, positive steroid you know uh, yeah i'm giving metaphorically it's like you're pumping in steroids of positiv- positivity and optimism that is not realistic who the fuck told you you can be anything you want what the fuck is that supposed to mean tell me how many people become presidents of their country how many people become astronauts how many people become a list celebrities point 0000000 i mean you can go up to i don't know how many point uh, point after the decimal point you know how how stupid it is to give someone unrealistic uh, dreams i know what you'll say loy oh if you aim for the stars at least you reach the it's like telling someone a hey man you can get that hot girl you know that really hot babe anything is possible like dumb and dumber when he says uh, when he asks that girl do you think i have a chance she says it would be one in a billion or one in uh, you know it will be a 0.0001 chance and then he responds by saying oh so you mean there is a chance yeah come on man look look at me and you just just simple look at me and you what fucking celebrity we are what billionaire millionaire we are we look at elon musk we look at okay sadguru's advice we look at uh, uh, oh, jeff bezos billions uh, we listen to some guru coach and all that shit oh he earned millions and billions and trillions oh dare to dream you can do it Oh, the five steps to success: work hard, have a vision, have a goal, take risks. You do all that shit, and then you earn what? Basic minimum wage, right? Forget basic minimum wage. You don't even have a fucking job. You put your CV. Who the fuck even calls you up? Why are we giving all this fake bullshit? Why are you telling your daughter and son you can do anything you want? Yeah, go become the president of United States and show me. Oh no, Loy. Uh, you know, but you should at least encourage. What the fuck, encourage? It's like telling someone jump from the building. Nothing will happen. Dare to dream. Would you do that? Fucking stupid, man. Then uh, point number six. You know, uh, offering a protective nest to your child is required. Even animals do that. They have a nest. or they protect that like a hen protects its ch- small chicks uh, a dog protects its small puppies so human beings also protect their children but sometimes it's overly protect overly protect to the point where the child loses a sense of reality i mean how many youngsters oh have uh, the salary what is the salary you're looking at a uh, lawyer something in the range of 5 to 6000 us dollars Ah okay. What is your experience? No law, I've just uh, graduated. Who the fuck is going to pay you 5 to 6000 US dollars? For what will they pay? You? No law, I'm a professional. What do you bring to the table? Law, I bring fresh new ideas. You put the ideas up your ass. That's what you do. You know why do they talk like this? Because they know mummy daddy they are they have money kept for me. I can go back home. I have a house that my father pays the bills for. food my mother will cook and give me i have my own room i have my own computer i have my own smartphone internet is paid food is paid transportation paid i can only dream i can only give ideas 
Just imagine if your mother, father were not there. Just assume that you are alone on the streets. Would you talk like this? This is a problem of being overly protective. You lose sense of reality. And this once again comes to upbringing. Point number seven. Uh, we have to blame all the, from Instagram, Facebook and all these people. The filters. Have you seen, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's imagine this. A girl, girl or a guy, going to take a photo. Think this is the camera. So what the girl will do? Put the camera. She'll do different, different poses. Like this, like this, like this, like this. She'll take 20, 30, 50 photographs. Okay? And after taking the 50 photographs, she will look. Oh, this, no, this, this. No, this is bad, this. She'll choose one. After she chooses the one, then she will press the filter for color. Which color looks best? Oh, the shading, which looks best. The lighting, which looks best. Oh, which angle. How to crop. Sensor this, remove this. Oh, there are these pre-built artificial AI filters that make my eyes look big, that make my nose look small, that make my cheeks look, uh, the skin look smoother. They do all this shit. Then they upload it. And then the tagline. Oh, I just woke up in the morning. Natural. Who the fuck are you trying to fool, man? How many females put fucking a uh, photograph that they woke up in the morning when we know that when you get up in the morning you look like shit you look absolute shit but have you seen their photograph? they look sensual, they look beautiful, they look hot you know with the bed sheet and the cleavage is popping out and half the leg is shown and the guy you know his towel just covering his crotch and his abs are flexed and all that who are we trying to fool man? the question is who are we trying to fool? And why are we trying to fool each other? Okay. See, the the main problem is when you get into when you get into a society where uh, uh, I was trying to move this side for these guys are making noise. See, when you move into a society where um, you know you you can fake an image and all you're seeking is validation. And you, your sense of value comes from the comments, the likes, the shares, the, f the praise. I mean, don't you think everyone will do this? Simple. How many boys flex their abs, show their arms, show the car, show the house that they are in? How many of them try, how many girls show, oh, you know, their slim body, their slim waist, their cleavage, their bum, their ass, their bo you know, they show a duck face and how many? How many boys and girls show that they're having fun? Oh, I'm on a yacht. I'm on a boat. I'm uh, sleeping in a five-star hotel. I'm eating expensive food. How many of our lives are like that? The fact is, our lives are not like that. But what do you see people doing? They'll have this image put on filter. And from the filter, they'll share it. On Instagram, a perfect world. On the videos, a perfect life. You know, the number of people who come to me and they tell me, Oh, Loy, you know, our marriage is uh, undergoing problems. Oh, Loy, we are having financial issues. We have four or five bank loans. And oh, Loy, you know, uh, I'm going through so much of stress. These very same people, if you check their social media, Fuck, what a perfect life. The guy who has multiple loans, credit cards and all that, shows that he is rich on social media. The female and male who pro whose marriage is in problems, on the photograph they'll show they are together or they are having a great life as a family. The person who is undergoing stress at his workplace shows that he has an expensive car and expensive suit and he gives advice to people on success. This is the problem with filters. Then the next one, number eight. Uh, you know, when uh, if you see some of the families when they take their children around, especially I don't know about Western families, but our Eastern, when they show their children, they make them wear the best clothes, they make them wear the best outfits, and they parade them as see my products. Number one, number two. Oh, fantastic. Look at my offspring good quality products which college oh very good college they go to oh number one rank holder oh 
they are oh. the way they parade them is as if they are you know when when you go for an exhibition and you show a concept car or one of the most amazing inventions this is the same thing they do with children granted that okay fine today you have a rebellious uh, generation that put their uh, soundproof headphones and soundproof uh, oh their latest iphone and uh, they want to show that they are cool and hip and happening yeah cool hip and happening on your father's fucking expense man not your fucking bills right you're showing that you're cool hip and happening pay your own fucking bills and show me stay alone by yourself no that you can't do see the being trying to show parade your children as the next concept car uh, this pressure that they put on children to show off in society from uh, what will other people think and you know get a rank and this itself dilutes the child's mind and then the child thinks always oh okay i need to be something in society i need to get approval of society this happens why because the parents parade these children as cool hip happening see the next one uh ah, number 9 when you give children uh, or youngsters access to a smartphone and access to social media they start engaging with other people show me one boy one girl one young man one young woman who hasn't tried to show larger than life an expert in everything who has a amazing opinion in fact some of my whatsapp groups i have you know some people are very rich and successful there you know uh, these people are like 60 70 multi millionaires some of them okay very rich very successful but you cannot make out because they'll never say anything so i have added all all kinds of people you know who want to be in my group you get even married people you get uh, people in their 30s 40s now the funny thing is what i found out the ones who are ordinary the normal uh, especially these youngsters 20 year old 25 year old 18 year old oh my goodness they will talk like oh they are amazing uh, what the fuck you know about modi what the fuck do you know about obama oh shit you know the the commodities price will rally up oh bitcoin is going to fucking reach this they talk like fucking experts like tough guys in fact they are ready to argue and fight with you verbally uh very tough but i can assure you if you would meet them face to face it'd be a fucking rat they would shiver just imagine you know they would come with their bicycle or their small little piddly they'll take the bus and stand there and in walks comes this millionaire with this rolls royce or bentley his driver opens the door he comes out with his bodyguards he looks at this small two up in real life they wouldn't have the balls real life they wouldn't stand a chance but here online i'm tough oh i'm big i'm what the fuck you'll do come on man i'll show you this is the problem so they become very tough online and the problem here is they literally believe their bullshit this is another issue you don't have to look very far just look at what is happening on youtube check under my channel half of them who literally talk smack with me would never do it never dare in real life that's why half of them have fake accounts then point number 10 it's a piggy back of the previous point nowadays you don't need to earn your place in society or earn respect or earn the privilege to communicate think about it when you were young when parents were all standing and talking or in a big party you have the ceo and all that standing and talking do you think you could just walk up there and start talking do you think your parents are talking you could just hey listen what this no you could never do that but today on social media let's say in a whatsapp group or in facebook adults are talking about the economy about uh, commodity shares you you'll just notice the student or some shit will blurt out his opinion ah oh, yeah no you're fucking wrong no what bitcoin is going to shoot up there and commodities are going to go up there and then if you ask this person what is your profile 
or how many millions have you invested to save face they will give some bullshit answer they will always give a bullshit answer they'll never tell you the truth but just imagine in the real world your parents are standing there can you do that assume there is a business meeting ceos are standing there if you are a fucking junior or a salesman you think you can go stand up in front of all of them and talk no they know who the fuck you are forget ignoring you they'll get you thrown out but this in social media there's no such thing right then next one point number 11 see people tend to believe whatever they want to believe okay like listening to the online bullshit um, i'm pretty sure you must have read this book uh what uh how how not to give a fuck uh, uh something like that it's an orange book with black font the art the subtle art of not giving a fuck the subtle art of not giving a fuck do you know how many youngsters have uh, how many youngsters from india have told me loy have you read this book you do you know why these why these kids are reading this book because for them they don't want to give a fuck to anyone they don't want anyone to tell them you're wrong they don't want anyone to tell them that listen you don't know what the fuck are you talking so they'll be like i give a fuck to you see the the thing is you subscribe to all this bullshit like jack ma says have a vision uh, elon musk says an mba is nothing uh, then so you cherry pick the bullshit that people give you you will take that one sentence one paragraph one statement and then you formulate your own virtual world of nonsense do you know the number of uh, youngsters i've spoken to what do you do i'm an entrepreneur oh wow oh uh, where is your office oh it's co coactive working spaces oh okay what's your turnover oh that's confidential ah uh, okay uh, what is your expertise oh i have multiple disciplines uh, everything from coaching to business to strategy oh wow okay how many years work experience you have oh i've been working from a very young age actually when did you graduate oh i'm currently doing my college or i've dropped out of college and then they brag about the fact you know i gave a speech oh everyone gave a standing ovation oh i spoke in front of a uh, uh, virtual crowd what the fuck is this man seriously what the fuck is this in the real world in the real world if you have to go talk to anyone let's say even go and take a bank loan you have to show actual actual physical uh, assets you have to you have to show real stuff online you don't need to show anything how many people today put themselves as business strategist coach in fact go to linkedin go to linkedin and check their designations oh chief catalyst what fucking chief catalyst or thought provoker oh ted talks what tedx speaker you f- gave a fucking shitty speech with 20 people in the audience and hardly 100 views and you're a fucking ted international speaker anyone can fucking organize ted man see the problem here is people like to bullshit online and the online bullshit only works online real life it doesn't work point number 12 cherry picking what they want to listen today's youngsters let's say you give them 10 pieces of advice they will only choose what suits them let's say for example you go online you type islam is a true religion you'll get all the sites that show you islam is a true religion you type islam the uh proof that islam is false okay they'll give you actual evidence with facts stating islam is false now which one do you listen to it all depends what you want to listen if you are a muslim who wants to believe islam is true you'll only google search that if you want to believe or if you choose to believe that islam is not a true religion you'll google search and get those facts those statements so even even for example today's media are you a republican or democrat are you bjp or congress are you left or right so given this today youngsters have a choice and what choice do you normally think they will take 
the one that suits them, what is music to their ears, what gives them the confirmation bias. Point number 13, I think uh, this is a sickness that not only youngsters but adults also face. Today the primary focus is engagement on social media. Everything that anyone does, whether it's a photograph, whether it's a video, whether it's a quote, the only thing they look for, hey doggy, the only thing they look for is engagement. The more the engagement, the better. In fact, how many times have you heard, oh, his content went viral. The news, oh, he went viral. In fact, my friend, who is a speaker, he put on this mask that has a face on it. He's actually my friend. He's the one who started it. It's called the faceless dad. Maskless dad, sorry, maskless dad. His name is Brian Parsley. This guy, he one day just as a prank, put this mask that has a face on it, and he went. No sooner he did that, he just shot up to fame with 75 million views. He was even spoken about on Joe Rogan's podcast. He became a, like an overnight celebrity. He had news channels, everyone talk about him. Now, as a speaker, as a businessman, he just has average number of views and all enough for him to make $100,000 a month. But ever since he got this viral thing, he didn't make more money, but he's become more famous. So guess what is he trying to focus now on? He's trying to make more prank videos that would get the same high, would get the same response. Don't you think he wants another 75 million views? For example, Gunnam style. He was the first artist to get 1 billion views for his uh, dance. Don't you think he tried to pursue that once again? So the problem is we live in a day and age where everyone's seeking engagement. In fact, even me, when I post a video, I'm always looking for, okay, how this video can go to more people because obviously the more people see it, obviously, you know, okay, the money is negligible. It's not the money for me, at least. For me, it's more about, okay, who can be my potential client? So today the reward mechanism is for engagement and people do literally anything. And we have seen the worst from prank videos to telling lies to faking stuff. How many people have done this? The, see, then, so that's where engagement is, it's become a sickness and it's become like a evil, uh, necessary evil for today's generation. Oh, next point, point number 14. The dopamine effect. This one is tough because let's say for example, I'm on Instagram or I'm on Facebook. I want to chat with some girl. Let's say I'm feeling alone. So what do I do? I send 100 girls messages. Send, 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 send. Hi, 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 hi. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, what's happening? And finally, after sending 100 girls, I wait. Somebody responds. Oh, wow. She responded. You know the high it gives you? It's like gambling. You try, 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 and one, you get a luck. So then you keep trying, keep trying, keep trying with those 10 girls who responded. And then two, three of them, the conversation goes even further. So what do you think you're going to do the next day? Every day you'll try this. Try 100 girls, new girls, every time. So this is a dopamine effect. This is employed with games. Online games, you know, when you press the reward, you get a slot machine like they, you know, in fact, there are virtual slot machines also. So like when you check your Facebook feed, you don't know what you're going to get. And the fact that it is unpredictable makes it so addictive. Why do you think people keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling to check? Where can I get something exciting? Whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, the dopamine effect. You see, search, search, search. Ah, you finally get something that you want. This in itself destroys so many things of a person. Let's just, just like smoking, drinking and drugs is addictive. This makes social media addictive. And this in turn destroys the very fabric of social skills. Where once upon a time you would learn how to, do you know how many boys and girls don't know how to interact in real life? How many boys don't know how to interact with the girl in real life? Today, the interaction has come down to Instagram. Swipe right, no, sorry, Tinder. Swipe right, swipe left. It's, it has lost its essence, man, of human interaction. Uh, point number 15. I think uh, the numbers game from number of friends to number of likes to number of shares. 
I think this also is creating a problem. Uh, today, everyone is targeting that. I mean, just look, check on Facebook. How many likes did this person get? How many shares? How many comments? In fact, my wife sometimes tell me, you know that uh, wedding photograph of ours when we had the proposal that had the highest number of likes. She even remembers it. In fact, even for me on my YouTube channel, my video that got 750,000 views, that stands out. We all want the numbers, number of likes, number of shares. And that in turn is engineered by these companies. You get more of this, we'll reward you with being a trending topic. So today our uh, youngsters only want to focus on this. Point number 16, we all want to look like our heroes. Have you seen Rock, Rock's physique? Have you seen uh, Kim Kardashian's body? Okay, now, how many fans does The Rock have? How many fans does Kim Kardashian have? And how many youngsters want to be like The Rock? Want to look like Kim Kardashian? Maybe you don't want to, but I can assure you, there's a massive number of people who want to. Like, they want to be like rap artists. They want to be like a tough gangster, this thing. They want to be this hero from this movie. They want to be like this film actor. Okay, the film actor has hairstyle like this. They'll put that way. Uh, K-pop. How many of them? In fact, how many, like here in Thailand, you know these creams to look white, fair, beautiful. How many of them have surgery for their nose to show perfect nose? You think youngsters don't fall for all this? How many, here's a simple thing. How many like to be fair? How many put cream to look uh, more fairer than they are? It's all because of this. We want to look like our heroes. And our heroes are all engineered. Whether surgeries, whether steroids, whether uh, Photoshop, uh, you know, they don't give a real, they don't give a real image of what is the reality. And this is what really, you know, drives people crazy, man. Oh, number 17. Have you heard this? Fake it till you make it. This is another problem. This fake it till you make it principle. Uh, we have this culture today that uh, if you want to be rich, first you show you're rich. You act like you're rich. You talk like you're rich. You be like you're rich. And if you do all this, automatically you'll be rich. This is called the fake it till you make it. And I can tell you this, the number of boys and girls who actually subscribe to this is, uh, is quite shocking. I met so many boys who are acting far more mature than their age, giving advice, telling, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. Why are they doing this? Because it's fake it till you make it. How many coaches are there who are not rich and successful but are showing that they are rich and successful? You can, do you know you can rent out an expensive car, you can rent out uh, a private jet, you can rent out a, a expensive mansion and show that this belongs to you just for a photo shoot, just for an Instagram moment. In fact, in Chinese, there are some websites where they rent out these images, uh, they give it to you for uh, hardly a dollar or two dollars. It becomes yours. Just a photograph. So, this fake it till you make it culture is now embedded in our youngsters. Point number 18. Uh, they think that uh, your value today is what you are online. I get so many people who tell me, hey, you think you're fucking big, but you have only, what, 40,000 followers. Uh, so I'm like, okay, and? Yeah, you know, PewDiePie has, you know, 28 million or whatever. So what do I do is, I give them the same. They ask me, how many followers do you have? You have, what the fuck, you have 50,000. I tell them, hey, fuck you, you have only two. You know? Uh, I'm not a social media guy. Good. I'm not a celebrity star. <laughs> the problem is, we evaluate your self-worth today on things that don't matter. Likes, shares, followers. In fact, I remember there was this um, Pakistani guy, you can just Google search, Kora. Pakistani guy, he got banned from Kora. Now this boy, he literally looks like he's a roadside guy, saying, hello, hello, Mary, hello, Mary fans, uh, to all my fans, 
I want to tell you, वो कोरा जो है they banned me because I'm becoming very famous. So I lost all my twenty thousand fans, fifty thousand, whatever. But I will not stop. And you can clearly make out the 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 kid is lost. He cannot even give you you know have a decent conversation. But he assumes he is famous. He assumes he is a celebrity because he wrote some things on Quora. So from where this this illusion of fame has come? It has come from social media. Oh, the next one, point number nineteen. The virtual world. We, you know, it's it's like. Um, have you any time played a video game? When you play a video game, it's so immersive. You get lost in that world. Okay, so that's that's taking you in a virtual world of imagination. You have the sound effects. You have the feeling. You have the even the. feedback from the device that vibrates so you actually feel it's real in uh, china japan and all these countries there are virtual avatars that you can buy for a premium there are virtual cities where you can interact with people and everyone interacts in the virtual you can even have relationships there you can stay you can have a house and you do all this for serious money huh it's actually a big business you if you see the movie wally That's what they're trying to show—a world where you're just lying down, and you're twenty-four-seven in a virtual world. This today, from gaming, it has not only gone into music, it has not only gone into virtual sex. I mean, it has gone literally everywhere. The profile that you create on Instagram, on social media, on Facebook—what is that? It's a virtual reality, right? It's not what you really are. From where did this come up? It came up from. the same thing technology companies manipulating your senses and that is why the more importance is given to who you are trying to project online rather than who you really are and that in terms harms the generation <sighs> point number 20 ah uh, your friends as time passes by friends become like parents where they guide you and the problem is we live in a world today where parents try to be friends and here's the problem when parents try to be friends no one takes you seriously but when friends try to be parents they listen this is becoming a serious problem where even your your authority as a parent is being challenged you know don't do this don't do that that is not right and because they see all the social media where they demand equal rights and this in itself harms Our youngsters of today, you know. Point number twenty-one. This is an all-time classic. The sense of entitlement. The number of kids that I met who say it's your duty. They're telling their mother and father, "It's your duty to look after me. It's your job." So what did you, you know, what did you do that is so great? Just imagine what what will a parent say? How do you respond to this when a child says, "This is your duty"? <laughs> Fuck. just imagine you know you sacrifice you do so much you help a child reach that level and then the child turns around and tells you what the fuck did you do and then even after you make the child grow up so big there's no guarantee the child will look after you this is the problem in today's kids in fact i know some kids who they because their parents didn't leave them anything in their will they fucking hate their parents This is a sad fact. It's it's just like a thankless job of being a parent, and the kids still have the sense of entitlement, and they this this sense of entitlement, you know, spills over to the world. Oh, I deserve a job. Oh, I deserve these rights. Oh, you must do this for me. It's fucked up, man. Oh, point number twenty-three. This one is. I'll give you the name, and I'm sure you'll understand. Greta Thunberg. Just one word. Greta Thunberg. Now, what do I mean by this? the female the kid wants to change the world wants to shout at leaders wants to shout at countries she'll tell everyone what to do you behave this way you act this way you do things this way but she will not sit and sort out her life she will not sit and keep her room tidy she will not sit and keep her house in order it's very easy to advise the whole world you do this you do that hey perfect yourself be perfect 
when you yourself are not perfect what the fuck has greta thunberg done apart from just being the headlines what has she done has she created something has she invented something has she s- actually solved anything by herself ordering giving barking orders to the world on the shoulders of wealthy investors thanks to your parents who have an agenda it's very easy to talk i can talk and lecture you on how to live your life without having done anything myself that's why it's very easy to give advice and this is where today's generation is they will lecture everyone lecture everyone on how to do what to do but they'll not put their life in order which is another sickness of today's generation point number 24 the instant life so today you want something what do you do you go to amazon you buy it you want coffee what do you do instant coffee instant tea you want to get six pack abs what do you do you check a course how to get six pack abs in six weeks or six i don't know six fucking hours you want to have a career what do you do how to earn seven figure income in seven months or seven weeks we are living in a day and age where everything is instant instant tea instant coffee instant remedy instant medicine everything is instant even today building a body steroids simple want to be rich okay what is the hack what is the oh bitcoin i can become rich millionaire in 2 months 3 months 3 weeks so when you have an attention span of a generation which everything is instantaneous why the fuck would you want to work hard next point point number 25 you remember the day and age where uh, if you wanted to impress a girl you have to have the skills you have to look the part you have to behave the part you have to act the part and yes you need to have that intelligence to impress talk and interact with a member of the opposite sex hey doggy what are you looking at me so those were the days with the art of seduction or whatever physical today what is it swipe right swipe left send a message i love you i mean the majority of youngsters today are experts at sending messages online but face to face absolute zero from where did this problem start it started because of the social media it started because of this internet today you don't have to develop skills where you get to know people in real life your social skills are limited to swiping left swiping right or uh, just sending random messages to random strangers and hoping someone will accept it and this has destroyed the fabric of you know the meaningful relationships people once had yeah oh point number 26 permanent solutions to temporary problems just google search online uh what happened to the tiktok star after tiktok was banned in india committed suicide oh she was bullied or he was bullied in school or he was bullied online what did they do kill themselves oh he wanted to get freedom from this what did he do took drugs went to alcohol from where do all these these habits come because when you interact with others and online not physically you become this larger than life person but with no real substance that is where when you face real challenges you don't know how to handle it you know i think there was this article in business weekly or this instagram female to fake her life literally took seven credit cards okay on to just to show people that she had a amazing beautiful perfect life she took seven credit cards blew all of them off or loans or whatever went purchased brand new clothes traveled to exotic places just to show on instagram that she was happy she had a perfect life she was successful however once after the money got spent and now she doesn't have any money now she doesn't know how to face life she doesn't know how to pay her bills 
she doesn't know how to get a job. In fact, she just wants her account back because that was her defining meaning, purpose or reality. So now, what is the answer? Now she has gone into depression. Oh, I can't face life. I want to die. And the problem, where does it occur? It occurs because they are all become soft. It's like sitting at home. They don't go into the real weather outside. And this is another problem our generation faces. Point number 27, the pressure to be viral. You remember, no, I told you about my friend Brian Parsley, who, uh, if you Google search, mask less dad, he put this mask that had a face and that got 75 million views and Joe Rogan spoke about it. That was one. Uh, Gunnam Style, I told you, he went viral with that song, Gunnam Style and got a billion views. I mean, how many people like to show that, oh, this content went viral? How many news channels, they actually cover, oh, this went viral. How many times do you see how to make your content go viral? This has become the agenda for most of the people online. They want their post to go viral. In fact, there was this Pakistani girl who, hum yaan party kar or some shit like that, she said. And uh, I think that went viral and all the actors and actresses and everyone was talking about it. Today, anyone for just doing nonsense online will become viral. In fact, what do you think is TikTok? What are people doing on TikTok? Obnoxiously stupid things. Obnoxiously. Girls are shaking. I, I, I check TikTok two, three times. Young girls are shaking their bodies sexually, are dancing. In fact, I'll give you a good example. There was this girl. She's a Filipina girl based in US. She only, the only thing she did was just bob her head, okay? Actual, huh? The only thing this female did was bob her head up and down. She just did duk, 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 that's it. And I'll tell you that, that video of hers bobbing her head went to, I think, uh, uh, what, 12 million, 15 million or 65 million views or whatever. And ever since that video went viral, all she does is just bob her head, shake her eyes and look left and right and do this and do that. And each video of hers on TikTok has gone 6 million, 10 million, 20 million. In fact, Belle Delphine, she's another online creator. She just shows expression like, oh, and this and that. And just that has gone to millions of views. We live in a day and age where if a girl shows a little bit of a cleavage, little bit of a body, shows a slim waist, shows her ass popping out. That people like and share. What do you think Kim Kardashian is doing? Showing her body parts. Oh, she is covering her nipples, taking a photograph on the phone and just showing natural or hard work. What the fuck are you talking? Why people do all this? Since when did showing your vagina, showing your body parts, showing yourself naked, since when did that become a trend? Well, it became a trend after you have a whole culture of people who encourage this. So what do you think today's youngsters want to do? Come out with the next viral XYZ. And this in turn makes people forget substance. This in turn makes people stop doing what is important and they spend their time, their resources, their money, everything to be the so-called viral for something, which is nonsense, man. Point number 28, just search on YouTube, productivity hacks, the word hacks, no? Okay, then uh, hacks, tools, strategies. Why do you think these words are very popular? How to or whatever? Because today, everyone wants to do things shortcut. Many people have asked me, Loy, what is your productivity hack? The hack to learn fast. The hack to get six pack abs. The hack to making easy money. Everyone wants shortcut. Nobody wants long duration. In fact, open challenge, try this. Put out two products. One product, price it at say $5. The other product, $1,000. The $5 one is how you can get six-pack abs 
after two years of work. But if you take this, it will work. The thousand dollars one is you take it and you'll get six pack abs within four to five days. Guess which product will sell off the shelf? The one which is priced at thousand dollars because everyone wants it now. Everyone wants it fast. Everyone wants a shortcut. This is the problem with our generation today. Nobody wants to wait. Everybody wants shortcut, fast, the hack, productivity tools, or what makes you much more productive, this, that. Nobody wants slow and steady. Nobody wants to work hard. Nobody wants pain. Nobody wants... Those days are gone. And this in turn harms people. Point number 29. Hmm. Escapism. Speak to anybody you know. Anybody. They'll say, Loy, I want to migrate to another country. Loy, which is the best career? Loy, which is the best product, service, tool, app, gadget, software? Why? It's not just because they want to do things better. People want to escape. Most of the youngsters today, they don't want to stay in India. The ones who are in India, they want to migrate to Canada. You know. Why? Because they assume after they migrate there, life is going to be easy. You know, like the old saying, the grass is greener on the other side. So all of them want, Loy, what if I try that? Would that make my life better? How, why do you think people drop out of colleges? Why do you think they want uh, to become an entrepreneur or online freelancer? Because nobody wants to work nine to five, be disciplined. Nobody wants a tough life. Everyone wants easy. And this in turn has given birth to a generation of People who just want escapism. And that in turn affects our youngsters of today. And last, if not the least, the final, the biggest point that I'll give you is, I think today we have a generation that one is the real world, which we are right now. Another one is the online world on which you are seeing me, talking to me, in which you used to communicate from Zoom to Skype to all this. We have come to a, such a pivotal point in our life where this real that we have, this real life, is no longer important, is no longer valid, is no longer useful. Today, it's become more like this life that we have, the real, is boring. So to enjoy it, what do we do? We create this virtual, virtual game, virtual reality, uh, songs, virtual cyber sex, um, everything is virtual. Likes, share, messages, interactions, dating. There's n very less importance given to reality. And nowadays, it's, it's come to a point where people enjoy being in the fake world. That Instagram photograph that they took 30, 40, 50 and chose the best one and photoshopped it and put a filter, made them look slim and more white skin and the perfect tone and color. That for them is more real than the boring reality where their face is ugly, where they are fat, where nobody gives a importance to them. I know one Thai lady, very rich, very successful, but she looks hideous. Horrible, huh? she looks. But when she puts her photographs online, fuck, I'll tell you will be shocked. She looks nothing like it. But she spends so much more time being on Instagram, Facebook and here where all her friends, followers and admirers, no one from within town, everyone from outside. And you'll seriously think this is who she really is. But she enjoys being in that world rather than being in the real world. That is where I told you before in Japan, China, Korea, there are these virtual reality places where they choose an avatar where you can literally pay money, buy your avatar, virtual clothes, have a virtual house, have a virtual dog, have virtual points, interact with human beings virtually and you know your scoring or rating is at the top uh, based on how much money you spend, based on your achievements and that attracts a bigger crowd to you, a bigger following. People actually spend more time in that virtual world after work than in the real world because there they enjoy it so much and with the dawn of you know with this pandemic and the dawn of zoom and uh, all these virtual they even come out with virtual sex you know 
nodes which connect you put a helmet it connects and gives you the feeling as if you are actually having sex so where does this stop this in turn will lead our generation a new generation to a, like they say a matrix no a kind of world which is not real but which people are addicted to finally will come out one day where you'll just be like a body that is a vegetable lying down with a brain connected to something and that's it you're in a matrix that's what it looks like it's headed towards because check today's generation what are they keyboard warriors brave online incredible but real life you see them the thin scrawny stupid no personality no no looks nothing but online they're so brave so beautiful so perfect and they try so hard to maintain that image where they argue with everyone fight with everyone prove to everyone that they are great and where the measurement of success is views likes shares so that is why it's disturbing and that is where i would be very very afraid of where our generation is headed today anyway these are the points that i wanted to give you with regards to today's generation and why i feel they are lost you let me know your thoughts in the comment section below what do you agree disagree i really like to know what do you have to say this is me signing off you guys take care